Something's calling me Something's calling me A little bit deeper than I've ever been before Feel like I'm walking on marbles Can't still the earth beneath my feet is my head in the clouds, my naked legs left dangling. I can feel my heart begin to pound. Something's calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever Something's calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been before. A long dark night, my soul it wandered. Can't see the light that moves me. If God is everything in everywhere that I belong, the Spirit gently wakes me from my sleep. Something's calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been before. Something's calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been before. Oh Lord, oh Lord, take me deeper than I've ever been before. Oh Lord. Compassion's calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been before. Peace is calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been before. God is calling me
preaching on Lent today. Did you know that this is the first Sunday of Lent? Yes. Yes. I've been talking about it for a month. A whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so this preacher in the little country church is talking about Lent on Sunday. And he's really nailing home the idea that Lent's about sacrifice and giving up something that you like to show God that you're worthy and you're serious, right? So he decided that for the whole 40-day period of Lent leading up to Easter, that the church was going to sacrifice by turning off the heat. <laughs> this is February, right? And he wasn't in Savannah. <laughs> so after the church service is over, he's standing at the door greeting the people as they go out. And this little lady comes through, and Mrs. Jones, and she was a founding member of the church, and she's regular contributor. She's been coming for a really long time. And he says, well, Mrs. Jones, so what are you giving up for Lynn? And she said, going to church. <laughs> <laughs> so change that is enforced from the outside rarely sticks. Right? right? And how many times have I made resolutions at the beginning of the year, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be good, you know, I'm not going to eat this, or whatever our thing is. And then three weeks later, I'm right back to the way I was. It's not about something on the inside. Remember this year we're working with, what's our word we're working with this year? Consciousness. consciousness. So it's all about a change in consciousness. And Kevin reminded us that Lent is an acronym for Let's eliminate negative thinking. Well, they were schooling me at the first service this morning. And they came up after the service and they said, well, you know, you keep talking about we don't want to focus on what we don't want. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're not here to struggle with our thoughts or try to suppress our feelings. We want to be authentic. We want to feel what's going on. We just don't want to dwell in it, right? Mm -hmm. When, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not set up camp right. <laughs> or build a house or invite my friends over to have a party with me. Right? I want to keep going. When you're going through hell, keep going. Right? Yeah. So they said, what if we said, let's embrace new thinking? Oh, yeah. Come on now. Can I get an amen? Let's embrace new thinking. Yeah. Because Charles Fillmore, one of the co-founders of Unity, tells us that the Lenten season is about fasting from negative thinking mm -hmm. and feasting on positive thinking. You know, what is it that we really want? Let's get clear on what we want and focus on that. So our practice as we move through these 40 days and 40 nights yeah. of our Lenten practice is let's repent during Lent. Mm -hmm. Okay? And remember, repent means to simply turn, to turn away from what we no longer want to experience and to turn toward what we do want to experience in our life. So I have a wonderful process that I want to lead you through this morning where we are affirming that we're feasting, we're fasting on negativity and we're feasting on positivity. So did everybody get a little sheet of paper when you came in with some affirmations on it? It just says feast and fast. Okay. Will you guys, do you have those back there? Will you pass them around? Because we're going to embrace some new thinking this morning. We're going to do a process feasting and fasting. Fasting and feasting. So it's a little half sheet. I don't they really got it. So there's a great book on Lent called uh, Keep a True Lent. And Kyle was sharing some of that with us at the Ash Wednesday service on Wednesday. And in the foreword to that book, the writer Georgiana Tree West says, when we withdraw our attention 
interest and support from the false and the unworthy, this is true fasting. When we give that same attention, interest, and support to the enduring good, we are feasting on the things of the Spirit, and that is true prayer. So I want to make sure everybody gets one of these. Because what I'm encouraging you to do is to take these little pieces of paper home with you and put them somewhere that you can see them during the Lenten season. Maybe on your refrigerator, in your car, on your bathroom mirror. And as we move through the spiritual adventure this morning, my invitation to you is to listen. What's calling you? Like when we go through these affirmations together, what stands out to you? What is it on this paper that is calling to you this morning? Because I guarantee you that as we move through this together, there's going to be something on there that really resonates with you this morning. If you don't have one yet, raise your hand. We still have lots of people. Ron? Everybody over here good? Everybody on this side good? Got a few over here. Lent is a period of 40 days leading up to the celebration of the resurrection on the Christ, of the Christ on Easter Sunday. Now, this morning we were, uh, I also learned that there's more than 40 days between Ash Wednesday and Lent, mm -hmm. right? What's up with that? There's 46, mm -hmm. I think, to be exact. Mm -hmm. The other six days are the Sundays. Mm -hmm. And Sundays are traditionally in the Orthodox Church, a feast day. So you don't include those. In it. We have lots of rules, I guess, in the Christian <laughs> tradition on the stuff, right? So remember that we're looking at all this metaphysically. What does metaphysically mean? Beyond the physical, thank you. That's why she sits on the front row. She gets all of this. And we talk about it all week, right? So metaphysical is what? Beyond. Beyond the physical. So when we talk about Lent, we're not looking at this literally. This is a practice in consciousness to release and affirm. Two of our main tools that we use in unity are denials and affirmations, release and affirmation, negation and affirmation. We're declaring what we want in our life and we're releasing or negating that which no longer serves us. Okay? So 40 days and 40 nights, we hear about that in the Bible a lot, right? Anybody know? Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. 40 days and 40 nights, they floated around looking for land. What else? Who else? Jesus was in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Fasting. Fasting. Okay, there's another one. The Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years. With Moses. So 40 is a is metaphysically represents a sufficient amount of time for something to occur. A sufficient amount of time for something to occur. So 40 is a period of time between now and Easter where something is occurring within us. Something is calling us. Thank you, dear. We're being transformed at depth. What are you willing to release? So as we go through this morning, I want you to focus on a couple of questions. And this is your invitation this morning. And if you want to take notes, this is okay. Uh, we're going to do a meditation process in a minute and you might want to have something to write with then. Um, your questions this morning, how is God inviting me to live my divine nature more fully? How am I being called, something's calling me, to live my divine nature deeper than I've ever lived it before, by Kyle? Something's calling me. What is it? What's calling to you? Anything stand out on your paper as we go through the morning, as we go through this meditation process? And then the next question is, what lesser way of seeing myself Am I ready to shed in order to do this? What do 
I need to let go of in order to fully express my divine nature? What lesser way of seeing myself? You know, that harkens back to what we learned when we were studying the third law of prosperity, the uh, forgiveness law, where we worked, remember the affirmation that we used? Anybody recall that? I forgive myself for ever seeing you as anything less than a child of God. And I forgive myself for making that mistake, for making the error of ever seeing you as anything less than a child of God. So what is it that I need to shed to forgive, to let go of, in order for my divine nature to fully express? So these are the questions, the invitation that I'm bringing you into this morning. And this isn't, it's not like math. It's like two and two. It's, not, it's four. You know, this is something that we contemplate on as we go through the next 40 odd days together as we approach Easter. We take this into meditation. We ask ourselves, we journal, we ask God, what's calling me? What wants to be expressed as me? You know, the word Lenten uh, literally comes from other words that mean increasing and light. Because during the Lenten season, we experience what? on March 20th, the spring equinox, right? So that's the day when the night and the day are the same length, and after that, the days get longer. So we're looking forward to increasing light. I know Peggy is at her stable, right? So, so this metaphysically represents this awakening spirit within us as we move to Easter, this light that is increasing in awareness of the light. Because the light's there all the time. It's just whether we're seeing it or not, or calling it forth, or noticing it as, as you go through your day. You know, I, I had a relationship with an orange yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> we were having this mystical experience together, me and this orange, because I was really present to my orange. It was actually a little Clementine. You, know, you can get those at the store right now. And I thought about how amazing this is that you can just go to a tree and pick this thing off of it, right? And it's got this nice, you don't need to put it in any kind of like plastic or wrap it up or put it in a bag. It's already got its own little carrying case. <laughs> and, and you can unwrap it. And then you have this little tree inside. You know, God gave us that. Like, we just have to go and get it. So that's what we're doing this morning, is we have this feast of, of our divine nature that is just there waiting for us to take. And so we're appropriating these ideas as we move through the Lenten season. Amen? Does that make sense? Okay. So what I'd like to do with you this morning is... First, we're going to relax, center ourselves in Christ's presence, which we're already there to a degree. The Satan does such a wonderful job of taking us into meditation. And then we're going to um, go through these statements together. And I'm going to ask you to repeat them. We're going to affirm them together. And just notice as we go along, there'll be periods of silence. Is, is there a word or a phrase or a color or a sensation or a symbol or a feeling or a song lyric, something that is coming to you, that's calling to you during this meditation time, that's trying to get your attention? That might be something, if you're a writer, that you might want to write down. Right? And as we go through these quatrains of denials and affirmations, fasting and feasting together, think about, is there one of those that's really popping out to you? That might be the one that you're being called to work with from now till Easter. So we're giving you some tools that you can use to practice your spiritual walk over the next 40 days till we get to Easter. And then we'll spend a little bit of time in the silence just listening to what the Holy Spirit has to say to us this morning. And when we're done with that, I'm going to invite you on a 
the sacred walk. We've been promising these little wristbands to you for a while. They say God is good all the time. Now, we're getting this concept from, once again, Reverend Edwin Gaines' book, The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity, where she talks about a process where you don't complain for 21 days. Mm -hmm. So you can put this on one wrist, and if you catch yourself complaining, then you move it to the other wrist and start over again. <laughs> Which, I don't know if you've ever tried that before, but I have never made it through 21 days before without complaining. I'll just say right now, it's, it's tough to do. You can't make it through one day. So you need one on each wrist. Okay, just keep switching them off, right? Okay, so what we're doing with these is we're using them as a reminder of the promise that we're making to ourselves this morning. We're using this as a tool to remind us that we're making a promise to ourselves, not to me, not even to God, but to yourself, that you're going to practice uh, fasting on negativity, feasting on positivity for the next 40 days until we get to Easter. And then I'm going to ask you if you want to, when we get after our Easter service is to find somebody to give this to after you've charged it up in your spiritual energy for 40 days, all those good thoughts are thinking every day, you know. Here's the thing is that when we want, we, when we want to express a divine idea, everything that we need to heal around that idea is going to show up for us. Okay, so when we say let's eliminate negative thinking, all of your negative thoughts are going to be right in front of your face because you're becoming aware of them. But that's the key. When we become aware of what we're thinking, then we can shift our attention to something else. Have you ever tried to not think about something? Yeah. Like right now, don't think about the fact that we have a big birthday cake in store <laughs> that I see. Chocolate and coffee, just waiting for us to come over there and eat it. Like, don't think about that. Okay? <laughs> birthday cake. Like, right? You can't do it, right? So it's like, okay, I'm mad at somebody. I'm not gonna think about that. I'm not gonna think about them. Boy, this person's really getting on my nerves. I'm not gonna think about that. Person. So we think about God instead. It's called the golden key. We have those little books in the bookstore. We'll give you one for free if you want one. Everybody needs to work with this. It's like when I find myself dwelling on negative thoughts, then I use the golden key to think about God instead. Or if you don't want to think about God, think about what you'd rather have instead. Oh, I'm thinking about conflict. I'm thinking about negativity. I don't really want to experience that. Wow. What would it feel like if I was feeling peaceful right now? You know? And I know about mental anguish. I can get a hold of something like a dog on a bone and not let it go. I'm telling you, anybody with me this morning, right? Okay. So we may have to go all day long some days practicing repenting during Lent. We are turning away from what we don't want and focusing on what we do. And maybe I have to do that a thousand times a day. But that's okay. That's what's called a spiritual practice. Because we're practicing this. So we're not going to start over if we mess up. You just keep this on your wrist to remind you that God is good. All the time. Come on now. And all the time. And if God is good all the time, then what does that mean? I'm good all the time. Yes. And we forget, right? So we have to be reminded. That's all this is, is a reminder that we're good, that God is good, and that we're engaged in a spiritual practice. So are you ready to get started? Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, let's all just center in and take a few deep breaths. Can we bring the lights down a little bit, please? Thank you. Just move into that awareness of this living, loving spirit that is always within us all the time. God is good all the time, and God is within me and around me all the time. 
so as we center ourselves on this idea of Christ, Christ consciousness, the expression of God that we are, we begin to relax into this moment and take the inner stance of availability and receptivity. We are open, we are alert and aware to the presence of the Holy Spirit of love and light. And as we focus on this light within us, our awareness of it increases so that we allow ourselves to feel filled with the presence of peace Breathe deeply, relax into this moment and allow ourselves to be available to God. How is God inviting me to live my divine nature more fully? Pay attention to any ideas, thoughts, feelings, symbols, numbers, colors, faces, people that arise. How is God inviting me to live my divine nature more fully? <laughs> what lesser ways of seeing myself? Am I ready to shed in order to do this? Once again, pay attention to what arises from within you when you sit with this question. What lesser ways of seeing myself am I ready to shed in order to do this, to more fully express my divine nature? I fast from judging others and feast on Christ dwelling within them. Let's affirm this together. I fast from judging others and feast on Christ dwelling within them. Take that thought as a treat. I fast from fear of illness and feast on the healing power of God. Together, I fast from fear of illness and feast on the healing power of God. Fast from words that pollute and feast on speech that purifies together. I fast from words that pollute and feast on speech that purifies. Fast from discontent and feast on patience together. I fast from discontent and feast on patience. Fast from pessimism and feast on optimism together. I fast from pessimism and feast on optimism.
passed from lack of consciousness and feast on abundance together. from self-concern and feast on compassion together. I fast from self-concern and feast on compassion. Fast from suspicion and feast on truth together. I fast from suspicion and feast on truth. fast from problems that overwhelm and feast on prayer that sustains together. I fast from problems that overwhelm and feast on prayer that sustains. So let us spend just another moment in this stillness, waiting upon the Lord. So as we begin our sacred walk this morning, I'm 
by each crew member uh, taking this risk of him. You're simply making a commitment to further your spiritual growth, to practice spiritual principles over the next few days. I'm going to ask Jules and Kevin if they will come first. Position themselves in the corners. So you walk up the center aisle, take your wristband, and then go to the corners and receive a hug and a blessing from one of our prayer chaplain coordinators. And then you'll go down the outer side of the sanctuary back to your seat. So, if you're ready and willing, I invite you to come forward and receive your wristband. Wow. Uh -huh. 
This is the opportunity if you feel spiritually fed by Unity of Savannah and you would like to give back financially. This is your opportunity to tithe, make a love offering, a love gift, whatever you call it. We know that all money, credit cards, checks, online transactions are only symbols of our source. God is our source. God is the source of our supply. God is our strength, our help in every need. So if you feel that you've been spiritually fed by our community this morning and you'd like to give back, I invite you to take your tithe or your love offering in your hand and let's prepare it together as Miss Evelyn comes forward to lead us in a prayer and our prosperity act. Take our love offering and place it in our left hand, and we will cover it with our right. The reason we do this is because our heart is on our left side, and we give from our heart. We're not interested in the amount, we're interested in the love. And as you give your love, you know that the love will come back to you 10,000 fold. So as we say our offertory blessing together, divine love has blessed you, blesses and multiplies all that. Please come forward because we'd 